guy whose voice you have heard if you ever listen to your radio in Sonoma County. Blair Hardman owns own recording studios. He's an amazing bass player, and he also has done plenty of radio commercials, audio books, and other assorted strange things with voices. He's going to tell us all about it right now. Please make him welcome, Blair Hartman. Thanks, Sarah. Everything you need to do voiceovers and one thing you don't. Now, I'm not going to talk about agents or marketing or VO demos or anything like that. This is all about you. And the very first thing you need is a mouth. <laughs> because that is where the sound comes out. And hopefully it'll be a mouth that doesn't have a lot of extra clicks, pops, whistles, and lip flaps, but in fact your mouth does, you just don't know it. Until you record it, and listen back to it, and look at it on the computer screen where we see the waveform, you also need an ear. You need an ear that likes to listen to other voices, and it helps to have a musical ear, because every sentence has a melody, and every paragraph has a giant melody, and the melody conveys different meanings depending on what you want to convey. So a musical ear helps, and you need lungs. Big lungs that take diaphragmatic breaths. Because when people read, they often take a lot of little unnecessary breaths when they read, but when they speak from their heart, you can go on and on and on. I could talk and not breathe for minutes. And you need arms. Because when we speak, we gesture a lot, and it's not for looks, it's because the gesture changes your voice. Listen to this. Just say something. Just say something. You see how the, uh, it carries a subliminal message in the gesture with the arms, and you need a heart, because the emotion behind everything you're saying is the reason you're saying it. And it's what motivates people to either buy a car or join a political party or whatever it is you're talking about. You need a soldering gun to rewire yourself, because when you read, the words go in your eye, through your brain, and come out your mouth. You need to have them rewired to go down through your gut, back up through your heart, and then out your mouth. And then what you say will be convincing. You need rhythm. Because when people read, they often surge and slow down and speed up, and every sentence should has a rhythm too. And most directors, when they're coaching people, will say, that was good, now just smooth it out a little bit because of the irregular rhythm. And you need a life. You need the bigger, the better. Have you ever noticed how, especially teenage girls and their sentences on a question, I don't know why they do it, but it always ends up. Uh, and it could be because they don't know the answers yet <laughs> to life's questions. And once you've lived a full, big life, your voice will reflect it. Life-changing experiences change your voice and give it depth and variety and gravitas and whatever you want it to have. The bigger the life, the better. <laughs> you need to forget elementary school because when you learn to read in elementary school, you were nervous and you pick up a lot of bad habits like uh, stilted mannerisms and monotonisms and forget elementary school. But an education really helps, especially for narration, because you're often called upon to talk authoritatively about things you don't know anything about. So the more you know about things in general, the more you can fake it. I just recently did a 30,000 word narration for Medtronic, the stent people, and I had to say words like neointimal hypoplasia and hypocardial infarction. And because medicine's a hobby of mine, it was a lot easier. <laughs> you need to be an actor, but it's much harder than being a stage actor because you have to stand in one place, you can't memorize your lines, and nobody can see you. So all that they do on stage, you have to convey, like I said, just with a microphone. Ah. And it really helps to have a screw loose if you're going to be a character voice actor. Because you could be called on to be the voice of a Dr. Scholl's foot shoe insert, or a glass of milk, or a water skiing possum, and it helps to be crazy. It also helps to have stamina. When I do audiobooks, I have to read three or four hours a day, come back the next day, and sound just like I did at the end of the day before. So stamina is also very important when you're doing long audiobooks. You need lessons. Because learning to use your voice in voiceover is just like learning to play a musical instrument. With all the component parts, there's scales, rhythm, melody. You need to practice and listen to yourself. And you need to learn to not say I'm sorry when you're doing voiceovers. Because for some reason, every time someone makes a mistake, and we all do, is I'm sorry. But that's not the character. You're getting out of character if you're being apologetic. And so, So,
silence. Silence and the space between words. And the one thing you don't need to be a voice actor is a great voice. A voicey voice. The announcer is dead. And so that opens up all the opportunities for voiceovers for all the rest of us. And it's really fun and I've enjoyed talking to you about it. Thank you.